Hi, I'm Monsignor Jamie, and welcome to a new episode of Breaking Bread, where faith, family, and food come together. Today, we have a very special guest. She grew up right here in Dyker Heights, and now she can be seen every morning on CBS. You want to know who it is? Stay tuned. Are you kidding me? Hi, I'm Monsignor Jamie, and welcome to a new episode of Breaking Bread. That special guest that I was speaking about is none other than Hot Benches Judge Patricia Domango. Welcome. Nice to see Thank you, you again, Monsignor. Here. You're welcome. I'm thrilled to be here. So we're all excited. I know, I know your story. I know you for almost 15 years now. We go back a long way. A long time. But a lot of people want to know how you went from being a Supreme Court judge to one of the stars of, of uh, Hot Bench. Well, I'm going to start from the beginning, okay. <laughs> okay? Because I grew up in Diker Heights. I grew up in Brooklyn. I'm a Brooklyn Italian girl. Went Saint to Finn Boss Parish. Saint Finn Boss okay. Parish, and when it became Saint Francis Cabrini, I alternated between the two. In fact, I actually went back to Saint Finn Boss and did a graduation. I was the speaker oh, at wow. their graduation there. I was asked How did that by, make you feel? You know, it's just amazing when you go back and then you look and you see people and you say, my goodness, I was this young once, I was here, I started here, and you know, they give you the whole theory, you can be anything, and the truth is, you can be anything. You really can be, Monsignor, and I think you know that as well. That's great. And then, you know, you went to religious instructions there? I went to religious instruction at St. Finbar's. We used to leave. You know, the bell would ring at 2 yeah. o'clock on a Wednesday. You couldn't yes. wait. You'd get out. You'd get in, and they'd take you to, to the... Uh, to the rectory, to the church, and you would have your religious instruction, and that was it, and you just moved along. So that's where you got your foundation. That's where I got it, yeah. That's great. And it was that's a strong great. foundation as well, and I rely on it, and, and I'm relying on it right now, like I hope this, <laughs> I'm praying, I hope this dish comes out well. Well, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna switch roles in a few minutes, but uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, but tell us, then you went to St. John's University? Well, I went to a Brooklyn College Brooklyn first. Brooklyn College, okay. Then Law I went school. to Columbia Graduate School. Oh, okay. I forgot about that. I went to Columbia Graduate, got my master's there in psychology, continued to her second master's there, and then decided that there was psychology wasn't quite where I should go, and decided that I would go to law school, and went back to my Catholic roots, back to St. John's University School of Law. Okay. And then so, you worked on the bench here in, in Brooklyn for... Longer than long I'm going to say on okay. TV, I'll tell you that. But I was there for a while. I first went to the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office, then I right. became a law clerk for some very, very uh, wonderful judges that really helped me shape my career. And from there, I knew, I, I always knew I wanted to be on the bench. It was just, how am I going to get there? A lot of work, a lot of prayer, a lot of everything gets you there. So I ended up being a criminal court judge by Mayor Giuliani appointed okay. me first Italian American woman to ever sit on the criminal courts in the city of New York, wow. the entire city. That's so. an honor, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Especially in today's world, I mean, you know, that's that's wonderful. I mean, you were a pioneer. Yeah, at least back. Yeah, I was actually. That's thank great. you. And then when I was elected to the Supreme Court I, in Brooklyn, I was right. the first Italian American woman in Brooklyn to be elected to the Supreme Court there as well. And they moved me around to do different jobs. They put me in the Bronx. I heard that you had to go up there. There was like a lot of cases that were backlogged. There was and you went up there and you kind of clean them all up on Absolutely. a fast track. Yeah, there was a very heavy backlog in the Bronx. Right. And so the chief judge of the state selected me, sent me there. And that's actually how it came to Judge Judy's attention. Oh, okay. Because I received front page notoriety with the New York Times, mm -hmm. and they were following it all over the state because everybody was so concerned about the inequities of leaving people in jail for, or uh, not resolving their cases mm -hmm. for, for years in some situations. So when I was done with that, I went back to Brooklyn. They made me the administrative judge. Of Brooklyn, right? Of Brooklyn. I remember that. And then I get a phone call from Judge Judy saying, uh, it was very cute the way she did it. She said, uh, do you know who this is? And you know, you could tell she has a very distinctive voice. And so I said, I do now. And she said, I'm putting together this show and it's called Hot Bench. Uh, and I'm looking for a New York uh, judge. Would you be interested in auditioning? And immediately I said, of course. And then I said, what am I doing? I'm just the administrative judge here. And ultimately they flew me out to California. I auditioned for the show. And that's how a Brooklyn Italian girl from right. St. Finbar's Parish ends up somewhere across 
in California and LA. With a Brooklyn accent. With a heavy Brooklyn accent. I'm the Italian <laughs> Barbara Streisand. That's what I say, the way it sounds. Now, that must have been a hard decision because, I mean, your family are here. I'm, you know, you have your parents with you, and yeah. you know, they're elderly, and you had to, you know, commute to the West Coast, but you come back and forth quite often. I do. I travel a couple of times a month. Right. I wanted to make sure that it was something I was able to do, and I come back to New York mostly to see my parents. Right. Also to stay in touch with people like right. you and, and connect with people that I've grown up with my whole right. life. That being said, I travel back and forth. I live in California part-time, and I live in New York part-time. So from Hot Bench, you've been interviewed on many different shows. You, I've seen you on Late Night and During the Day, Rachel Ray. I'm haunting you. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? Through the show. My publicist, Gary, always you know, tries to work and, and put us out there so that the public can see who we are and learn a little right. bit about us as well. And so I've been on uh, Rachel Ray probably five times. I already. remember the first time you were on or the second, I was there with your parents and That's we sat right. in the front row. You did, you <laughs> did. Was, oh, it was great. Right in the front. And you were cooking. You I, were made yeah, exactly. I made lasagna. I made lasagna that show. And then I was, I think, three times on uh, Steve Harvey. Okay. And one time on Wendy Williams. Okay. Several times been interviewed on ET. That's great. Yeah, they're really putting us out there. So, you know, two times nominated Emmys. Oh, that's wonderful. This is the fifth season coming up? Coming up into five, wow. yeah. So things go very quickly. Wow. Time passes. Do you ever think a girl from, you know, Diker Heights, St. Finbar's Parish would wind up in Hollywood? No, no. It was never something I even contemplated. Uh -huh. I mean, even when the phone call came in, at first, at first I thought it was a joke. And they had to say, you know, to make sure you know this is this is really Judge Judy calling you. So you never know really... what God has in store for us. No, right? you I mean, don't. And you have to have faith. You have to believe in it. It was a hard decision to make, but you made that decision. You had to leave behind, you know, your family and the job. It was a risk. You didn't know what was going to happen. No. But sometimes, you know, uh, God calls us in different ways, in different places for a reason. And you and pray for guidance means. and you exactly. look for guidance and, and somehow it, it befalls, befalls you. That's great. That's wonderful. We'll be back in a minute and we're going to do something a little different today. The judge is going to cook and I'm going to judge her cooking. Don't go away. Don't be too judgmental. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Breaking Bread, and today we have TV celebrity Patricia DeMango, Judge DeMango from Hot Bench. And uh, she's a dear friend, and she comes from Brooklyn, and today we're gonna switch roles. She's gonna cook something, but before that, I'm gonna robe you. Oh, that would be a nice change. <laughs> yes, a robe from Breaking Bread. Ah, a cooking robe. Yes, I don't want you to get dirty. Oh, okay. It's not as long as the robe that you wear on the bench, but... Uh, but has its purpose, and yes. that purpose is to keep my splatter and anything you might accidentally spill on me off my Never. clothing. I'm going to stay out of this. You're going to stop. I don't that. think you can do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm certainly not thinking you can do that. That's so for sure. So what are we making here? We're going to make linguine and clam sauce. And I oh. specifically chose this dish, Monsignor, because of some connection you have to clams. Yes, I remember many years ago when we became friends, over 15 years ago, I think it was. Yeah. We, we met at uh, the Cathedral, Cathedral Club. Club. Yes. And we talked, and uh, that summer we happened to run into each other with friends in the Hamptons, and we went clamming. And we went back to the house, and we, we all pitched in, and we made spaghetti and clams. But the best part about the clamming for me was no matter how hard you tried, I still got more clams than you did. <laughs> and so you're, you're... But we didn't use rakes. We used our feet. We did. And, but oftentimes I've gone out with the rake. In fact, we took the rake this time, but the, the sand was so soft yeah. that literally our feet were sinking into it, and you could just feel them with your feet. And then As, once we started catching it, we caught, I think, I think almost 200 clams. Oh, yeah, that we day. did. We easily. were a lot of people. It and was, we did different things with them. Yes. We made baked clams. We put clams on the grill. On the grill. Clam sauce. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we even made clams and eggs the next morning. No. You might have, but I didn't. <laughs> I wasn't going to eat clams and eggs. Especially so tell the next us, day. what are you going to do here? So what we did was, you know, you can do this the hard way or the easy way. So I, I think I'm going to explain both, but maybe we'll just do it the hard way. So the hard way is to actually go out, get yourself 36 clams or so, okay. and cook them in a pot with a okay. little bit of water. Take them out of the shell, as That's I did, did here. Yeah. Okay. And these are Manila clams, and so they're a little smaller than the um, than the ones we the were we were neck, catching, right. than the little neck clams. And in here, I'm going to put this on a medium uh, a medium flame, and I'm going to cook the garlic in the oil in olive oil until it's fragrant okay. and brown, okay. a little so bit brown. So use fresh garlic here. Yeah, fresh right. garlic, okay. which I chopped up ahead of time okay. so that we didn't, you know, delay too much 
and I am cooking that in here. And then into this, once this starts to brown a little, I'm going to put some crushed red pepper, about a half a teaspoon. Okay. Do you put red pepper in Yes, here? I like it a little spicy. Yeah, I do too. And I think it, even if it doesn't give it that, that hot flavor, it gives it, a, for some reason, it, it does well to the flavor of the sauce. And then they can always add their own at the end. Ah, absolutely. You know, Italians love their pastas with a little oh. bit of spice. So I'm going to add a little bit of this in here, which would be the equivalent of about a half a teaspoon. I've got to tell you, this little gadget we have actually really yes. does uh, pick up pretty quickly. And then, of course, with every dish, what do you think? Salt, pepper. Salt and pepper is a must. That's for sure. So we'll put some salt in. We'll put some black pepper in. And now, do you like oregano? I do. Okay, because I want to put some oregano. I'm not going to put too much in okay. because a lot of people are not all that fond of oregano. And it's a strong taste. It is a very the strong taste. taste. You always taste it. Exactly. Oregano. So I'm going to put. But Italians some use oregano in a lot of things. Because this is such a mild sauce, and you don't, you really don't want it to overpower the clams. And a lot of parsley. I would use about a half a cup of chopped parsley. And it's an easy dish. It doesn't take long to prepare. No, it really does Once not. Once you have everything in order. That's the advantage of it. So the easy way, as I said, would be to purchase a can of unseasoned chopped clams. Okay. But instead, what we did was we actually opened up steamed this. Them. We steamed them and opened them. And I'm going to show you. We'll do it in here as well, because we're going to use these also. We're going to do that in here. And when you put clams in a pot, I mean, they, they open immediately. These do. These yeah. open immediately, and they give off a nice little okay. broth. Now, it's so important that the clam, if it doesn't open, don't eat it. Throw it away. No, no, no. All the prayers in the world are not going to stop you yes. from getting sick on that one. <laughs> You've got to really make sure they open up, and okay. that's how you... That's, you know, it's interesting how... Put that a little higher. It's, it's, it's interesting You don't how... want it to cook too slow. I mean... No. I don't no. want to tell you what to do. No. But, you know. Oh, sure. <laughs> Is that high enough for you? I Monty? think that's high. Yeah, that's good. You're good with that? Yes. You know what it's... God protects nature and people because it doesn't open. You can't open it. Right. You shouldn't that means open you it. shouldn't eat it. Exactly. Animals and people don't get sick if they obey the laws of nature. So now when this opens up, these will open up and they're going to give off some broth. Now, you could also use a clam broth, but instead we've gathered the broth from these that we've opened up. Right. And That's ultimately, the juice from the clam. we will put that in. And you put a little water in the pan. I did put right. about a half a half a cup of water in because you need something to cause right. it to open up. Okay. So we can even put a little of that in here now. See, look at this. They're it popping opens, open yes. already. And once they pop, they're all open. That's it's it. Like popcorn. Once one pops, they all pop. You know, <laughs> sad, but that's a good analogy. A little more. A little, a little more. more. How much more? Just a little bit. You sure? Yes. You tell me when, because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get on the bad that's side That's good, of you. that's good, that's good. What we have here is actually the clams the in chopped clams. the chopped clams, as you can see from in here. So we have this, but we can still add them in. Yes. I mean, there's no harm more. in it, because it's extra broth, more clams, the better, right? Yes. And these, as I said, these are, you They're just move them around open. in here. They're all popping open like popcorn. Okay. And then what we're going to do is, because this, the best thing you can do with any pasta dish really is actually once the pasta is done, don't overcook it, and then cook it with the uh, sauce right. so that it really coats the right. pasta. And you like everything your blends together. You like your pasta al dente? Yes. I do no too. No other way. No other way. It's got to be al dente. All right, so these are opening up, and we should be soon getting ready for the actual uh, pasta. Pasta. Okay. You know, I, I did notice in the ingredient list that I did not include lemon, but you did. Do you have a reason uh, for yes. wanting me to put lemon in this? I always put lemon on fish. We're going to do it here, yes. too. All right. So, so these are open, most of them. Yes. Let's see if there's any that I'll did not a open. Bit. Move over. That's good. Bossy. <laughs> That's good. You know, in my courtroom, you wouldn't get away with that. But since this is your... Your rectory, I think we're going to This is not to. the bench, Your Honor. No, it's... By it's, the way, how they, why do they call it hot bench? It's actually a, a legal term. It means that the judge or the judges on the bench at the time are very up to date with the law and the case and the facts. They pepper the lawyers with questions. So it's a hot bench. Everything moves oh, very, okay. very quickly. It sizzles up there. Okay. Sizzling like this, you know? See, there's a lot in common. Are with, you kidding me? With your, <laughs> uh, you're stealing my lines. No, I'm not kidding you. That's, Look at that. That smells good, I have to say. For a really judge, good? not too bad. <laughs> Wait, thank you, Monsignor. I think we could shut this right okay. now. Or put, put it, it on. You have that? We're on low. Okay. All right. And then we can throw this in here as well. All right. So, But we don't want to overcook it, so it's off. 
That okay. looks good. And then the chopped clams. And the chopped clams, we'll do that as well because we definitely need sure. more of the broth. Okay. So we can do it well, this way. If we don't way. put that broth in, it's a little cool. We'll put this up a little higher. <laughs> do you ever see me make that face on TV? <laughs> of course. I'm making it to you. The only thing I'm going to throw the whole thing in because right. I knew you were going to tell me to do it, so I'm doing it. I'm doing it before you tell me. All right. We good? Yeah, oh. We didn't have much time to deliberate here. No, no, we're going right to verdict on this one. Straight to the verdict. No deliberation. This is a two-judge bench now. A little now. higher now. You want that to go in there. Because it's cold. You know, the clams were cold. So when you put cold with the hot, you got to bring them up right away. The well, temperature up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for the, for the cooking. You sure drink. you want me to come in your courtroom? No, room? I'm not having you come. Right. You're not going to be a guest in my courtroom. Okay. You're going to want to take over. You'll be pushing me off the side, taking the robe. No, I'll be very respectful. Uh, you will be respectful, yeah. but you'll still want to take over. No, 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 that's not. In a minute, we'll come back, and I'll be the judge of this one. I'd like to hear your decision. Don't go away. In a few minutes, we'll taste this spaghetti and clam, and I'll let you know what my verdict is. Welcome back to hey, Breaking Bread. That's my line. This is my show. I'm Judge Domango, and alongside of me, we have Monsignor Jamie, who's assisting me here today. On hot bench. <laughs> We've I can get used to this. Yeah, we've I had a lot of fun this. today, let me tell you. I so what, what do we do here? Well, what do you so have? So now everything is almost ready. We've cooked the pasta. It's al dente. You cooked it everything the way I told you. <laughs> okay. Yes, I did. Everything okay. the way you said. You must be kidding okay. me. Okay. All right. All right. Really? Let's, let's, let's All right. go. Let's, let's go. do it. So now <laughs> we're going to take the sauce as already cooked with the clams and the okay. extra and throw it into the pasta. now. You can also, if you like, which might actually even be even better, if you have a larger pot, that your pan that you're using actually, you can throw the linguine into the pan and sort of saute. Thanks. Thanks for, for turning welcome. over the gavel. <laughs> no, uh, that's true. A lot of time when you make any type of pasta, the sauce, you usually throw the pasta into the pot with the sauce so that it absorbs all the sauce and the well, flavors from around the pot. Well, we're on the same page yes. on this one. Yes. yes, that's exactly correct. And so the one other thing that we definitely need to place on this, and it's important that we do. Lemon. <laughs> what do you have? You don't like lemon? Parsley. Lemons? I do like lemon. I do. But it was just that, you know, I almost feel like you want to take over the dish. No, no, no. Are but you sure? fish, lemon, breakfast, orange juice. All right, we'll do the lemon, but first I'm going to throw some parsley okay. on it. We have some chopped up parsley that I would normally use a little more parsley than this, but I think, you know, rather than... Yeah, we, we have, have to you, conserve. We, uh, the show has a very limited budget. <laughs> how about some lemon on here? Sure, I'll put a little lemon. Right? Throw a little lemon on, okay. see how that goes. A little stick in like this, and bam, bam, bam. Who am I with? <laughs> Here we go. Let's go. Here we go. Cheese. No cheese. I love cheese, but okay. God, you know the Italians That's a and taboo. cheese. I know, Fish I know. Fish and cheese on pasta, no, but Do, some Do you ever go like. to a restaurant they don't want to give it to you? Because I love cheese, even with this. I mean, I say there's crab meat al gratin. Okay. That's got cheese in it, right? I like this, and now I think I'm going to like it with okay, the lemon. Okay, let me, let me be the judge of this one. Listen, I expect it's a that, very it, good verdict in my favor. It looks a little dry. Well, it's because you didn't mix it right. It's not dry. No, no, no. See, look. See the sauce? See, look. Oh, look, okay. Look. All right, let me taste. All right. Make sure you put clams on there. Don't be skimpy. <laughs> I'm going to just do a little bit, then I'm going to put the clams on top. But you're going to want to have a spoon. A spoon to get the sauce. Ah, that's enough. It's not the Last Supper. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you if you eat a closed <laughs> clam, it's going to be your Last Supper. Because that's not going to be good can for you. Can I get a little juice here? Here. You want it? All right. Can you get it this way? There you Tilt it down. Do you don't have bigger spoons here? No. No. I it's, a new, it's a new kitchen. We, we, we're we limited. I like to put a little hot pepper. You add, you add all the pepper you want, Monsignor. Who's going to who's gonna argue with you? How about some lemon. cheese? A little more lemon. What, are you remaking the dish? <laughs> I think, I, you know, I am not going to come back on this show anymore. If you're going to keep correcting my cooking. Go back to Rachel Ray. <laughs> <laughs> come on. At least this she likes you. everything I make. All right. Let's see. I'm not going to do too much, just in case. Okay. A little lemon? Yeah, yeah. I want to try it with the lemon. I do lemon, too, but not a ton. Okay. And I would like some cheese. Cheese, okay. Do you twirl your spaghetti? Yes, I do. I do, too. A little spoon. 
Like, you know what? I actually can do this without the spoon. Oh, really? Well, I'm Did you it. learn that in California? <laughs> actually, I learned that in, in, in Naples, where we're from. Oh, okay. What part of Italy are you from, your family? We're from Sorrento. Oh, Sorrento. My father's family is from uh, Salerno. Salerno is really is where we're right. from. And, and it's mother. right, really right next to it. Eat up. I'm going to see if you survive first before I go into it. What do you think? You don't seem too enthusiastic. No, it's very good. Well, it well really, I want to see some enthusiasm. Not really. It's very good. And I have to say, I think the hot pepper and the lemon really make it because it just adds that extra flavor. It gives, <laughs> no, it's very good, Your Honor. It actually is, it, it, I think it's pretty tasty mm. too, Monsignor. And I'm glad you're enjoying it. And I know it. I like it like this. Some people like it very soupy. But all you have to do is use a little bit of the water from the pasta. We do. And you can save it and just throw it right in. You know, I have to say, I had a good time today because, you know, you're busy on the West Coast. I'm, you know, busy. We don't see each other as much as we used to, you know, when, you know, you were living here in New York. And once again, we prepared a meal and it made us reminisce. It, you know, connected us together again. And I think it, it's things like that that really um, show the importance of tradition and also the importance of, of cooking and preparing a meal together because it, it brings people closer together. Some of my fondest memories of my youth really do center around eating the whole, the, the, the whole, just get the whole process of it. Like when we would, we'd go to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I had five, you know, four aunts and uncles and my parents, and we had 13 first cousins, and we would all go to our respective parishes, and then we'd all go to my grandmother, and she was centrally located, like the hub of a wheel, and we would all converge there, and just on the walk there, right. you can smell from each of the homes, because it was a very big Italian-American neighborhood, and the old Italo Italians on a Sunday mm. had the same, you know, the, the same routines, and you'd smell the garlic, you'd smell the, the tomato sauce, the frying meats in the pan being right. braised. And by the time I got to my grandmother's, we were only a couple of blocks, we would be starving. You know, everybody calls pasta, all the yuppies, pasta, pasta. It's, it's macaroni. It's macaroni. <laughs> it's only pasta if it's fresh. Right. And so she really made fresh pasta. And you would go in, and we want to know what it was for that day, you know? It was all over the bed. Yes. I remember. Yes. The sheets on the bed. Yes. And the raviolis, the pasta. Everything. The orecchietti, we used to eat. The orecchietti, the little ears. <laughs> yes, that's what it translates exactly. to. And so they were all laid down on the bed, and that's what we knew we were going to have that Sunday. And, the, and it was just drying because you didn't want it all to stick together. And we were there, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins. We embraced each other so much right. that you couldn't even tell whose parent belonged to which right. child because everybody treated us like we were their own. Right. And you can't create those memories. And that's the problem, I think, with today. Yes. Nobody has that extended family. You know, these traditions that you're talking about are so true in so many different ethnic groups. They all had oh, that yes. same sense of faith, okay? Family, family dinner, food, that brought it all together. And that's what this show is about. And, you know, I'm so glad that you were able to come on the show. I'm so glad that we, you know, reminisced. And I look forward to clamming again this summer if I get a little time off after the great feast here at Our Lady Mount Carmel. But we have to go and we have to go clamming and we have to make a nice well, spaghetti and clam. But this time, I'll make it. I'm, and I'm going to let you get most of the clams this time. <laughs> and you can go back to being the judge. Okay, I like that. I like that. Maybe we can actually serve it at your feast. You make a lot of money. You think? Yeah, I think so. See right away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't get that out of me, you know. It's all for a good cause. It is for an absolutely good But, Your Honor, thank you. I wish you luck, and I wait for the day when uh, your show wins an Emmy. I do as well. Wouldn't it be funny if this was the one they nominated me for? <laughs> well, then you can always But then say. I need the other two judges. I need the other two, and I can always say stuff But please you. give me honorable mention. Oh, I absolutely will. And Monsignor, you've done so much thank with the you. parish and the church, and, and you, you do so, good, so much good for children. Thank and you. And thanks for all your help, and look forward to seeing you on Hot Bench. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Breaking Bread. I really did, I have to say. But once again, you saw how food can bring people together. Friends that, you know, don't see each other that much anymore. We came together to prepare a meal, and we reminisced. It reconnected us, and I think that's so true in all of our lives. Let's make the meal, the table, a place where we can reconnect with family and friends, and we can share our lives together and share our faith. See you next time on Breaking Bread. Thank you for watching this episode of Breaking Bread. I really enjoyed the show, but the show is all about faith, family, and food. And today we saw how those three things really come together with Judge Domango from Hot Bench and how the traditions of a family growing up, surrounded by family and faith and food, 
really is so special to her and how it's special to all of us and how, you know, every different ethnic group really values those things. And today, hopefully, we gave you a touch of that. Let's remember that life is all about family and friends and faith. And the thing that brings it all together is food. So make sure you connect with us next time on Breaking Bread. See you then.